What's behind rising crime, violence, and immorality? A standard for living in today's world. What's behind the dramatic increase in violent crime in our society? A major U.S. magazine describes our nation as America the Violent. Another article tragically stated that 23,700 people were murdered in our country in a recent year. The average 18-year-old has witnessed 200,000 violent acts on television, including 40,000 murders. Murder, robbery, rape, school violence, drugs, terrorism. What's going wrong? Why is the moral fabric of society disintegrating? Is there an answer? Our society appears to be drifting on an uncharted sea without a moral compass. We seem to be wandering in confusion, desperately looking for some North Star to guide us. In our lesson today, we will discover the truth about what's gone wrong with our society and God's solution to crime and violence in the 21st century. Question 1. What urgent call does God give us to a society living on the verge of social collapse and moral decay? Revelation 14 verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. Revelation 14 verse 7 To fear God means to respect or reverence God. It is a call to obedience. God's call to judgment implies accountability and moral choices. It is a call to a higher standard, a standard outside of ourselves. Question 2. How do we fear or respect God? Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13. Question 3. Is our own heart or mind an adequate judge of what is right or wrong? Jeremiah 17 verse 9 The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah 17 verse 9 Since our natures are fallen, our hearts deceive us at times. It is easy to justify our behavior based on our own personal desires. We need a higher standard outside of ourselves. Question 4. How does the Bible describe those who trust in their own minds to guide them in making moral decisions? Proverbs 28 verse 26. I'll do it my way. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered. Proverbs 28 verse 26. Question 5. In Revelation, the Bible's last book, what did John see in God's temple in heaven? Revelation 11 verse 19. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there was lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. Revelation 11 19. When God commanded the Israelites in the Old Testament to build a sanctuary, He commanded them to make the Ark of the Covenant to contain the tables of stone or tablets of stones or the Ten Commandment Law. The temple in heaven containing the Ark of the Covenant contains God's law, the foundation of His character. Revelation's answer to lawlessness is found in heaven at God's throne in His eternal standard of righteousness, which is His law. The law of God is a transcript of His character, a transcription of His will. Without the law, there is no sin. 
The Apostle Paul states, For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Romans 4 verse 15 Question 6 What is the function of God's law? Romans 3 verse 20 Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Romans 3 verse 20 Question 7 what is the eternal, unchangeable standard of God's government? Psalm 111, verse 7 and 8, and 89, verse 34. The works of His hands are verity and justice. All His precepts are sure. Psalm 111, verse 7. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and uprightness. Psalm 111, verse 8. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Psalm 89 verse 34 God's law is the basis of His commandment. It was established to ensure the peace, order, harmony, and unity of the universe. A broken law brings sorrow, suffering, bondage, and death. Proverbs 5.22, Romans 6.16 and 23 Question 8 to what does the Bible compare God's law? James 1 verses 23 to 25 For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. James 1 23 For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. James 1 24 but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this one will be blessed in what he does. James 1 verse 25 The law is a mirror that enables us to see ourselves and recognize our need of saving grace. The law reveals what sin is. It provides a moral standard outside of ourselves. Question 9. What is the role of grace? Ephesians 2 verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Ephesians 2 8. Grace is God's unmerited favor to bring us back into harmony with Him. The sole basis of our salvation is grace. Grace has always existed. It means pardon, mercy, love, and kindness. Genesis 6 verse 8, Romans 4, 1 verse 2, 4, 2, 4 and Ephesians 2, 4 verse 2, 8. Grace frees us from the condem condemnation of the law. By grace we pass from death to life, Romans 5, 8 to 10, and 8, 1 and 2. By faith we accept the grace of God, Romans 3, 20 to 8. Question 10. How are we justified or made right with God? Does keeping the law form the basis of our salvation? Romans 3.28 Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Romans 3.28 Question 11. Does faith give us freedom to break God's law? Romans 3.31 Romans 6.15 Do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. Romans 3.31 What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Certainly not. Romans 6.15 Question 12. What is the converted person's relationship to God's law? Romans 7 verse 22 For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. Romans 7.22 According to Billy Graham, or Graham, question. Some religious people I know tell me that the Ten Commandments are part of the law and do not apply to us today. They say that as Christians, we are free from the law. Is that right? Uh, answer. No, it is not right. And I hope you will not be misled by these false opinions. It is very important to understand 
that what the New Testament means when it says that Christians are free from the law. It certainly does not mean that they are free from the obligations of the moral law of God and are at liberty to sin. Conversion always leads us to delight to do God's will. When Christ changes our hearts or converts us, we have one supreme desire to obey Him. He has done so much for us that we gladly serve Him. Obedience is not a legalistic requirement. It is part of a loving heart's response to God. Question 13. What did Jesus teach His disciples about the importance of keeping His law? John 14 verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14 verse 15. Question 14. Did Jesus teach that he came to do away with God's law? Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. Matthew 5, 17. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one title will be no means passed from the law till all is fulfilled. Matthew 5, 18. Question 15. What is the genuine test of knowing God? 1 John 2, verse 3 to 5. Now by this we know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments. 1 John, 3, uh, 1 John 2, verse 3. He who says, I know Him, and does not keep His commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. 1 John 2, 4. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. 1 John 2, 5 The evidence of the internal change called conversion is a changed life. Grace always leads to obedience. The more we love God, the more we desire to obey Him. Question 16 in Revelation's final call to a planet rapidly disintegrating into lawlessness, how does God describe His people? Revelation 14.12 Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14.12 A genuine commitment to God leads to loving obedience. At the end time, God will have a group of people who revealed to the whole universe the joy of living obediently. They have been saved by grace. They love God so much that they enthusiastically obey Him. They accept His standards of conduct. They are convinced His way is best. My decision. Since I love Jesus with all my heart, I choose to obey Him joyfully. I gladly accept the principle of His law as the guide of my life.